Well, the first thing that jumped out to me is the name Jason Reitman. I'm a fan of his. Um, the fact that he's directing the movie and had a hand in writing, it meant a lot to me. I really like his sensibility, and um, I'm a big fan of a lot of his movies. So that was sort of the first draw uh, on page one of, this, of the script uh, before I knew anything. Uh, but I'm, I'm also a really big fan of political films. Um, I, I follow politics closely. It's a subject I'm interested in. So to kind of examine a very specific consolidated piece of American political history um, was something that I was sort of very interested in. And in, in light of sort of the current political climate that we're in, it seems uh, kind of uh, surprisingly relevant all of a sudden to tell this story um, and to kind of see how, in a sense, Pandora's box was opened over, over the week or two that, that this movie tries to cover. I've never had more camaraderie with a group of actors on a project before, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, we hang out every night. We've been doing this for almost two months now, and inexplicably, we're not sick of each other yet. So that's, that's pretty nice. Amazing. He's like one of the most down-to-earth people I've ever met in my life. He's a self-deprecating goofball who doesn't take himself too seriously. And so I think that puts everyone sort of at ease. We're kind of very comfortable with him. Uh, we respect him. He is sort of the center of the show. Um, but we don't really clam up or feel like, you know, we get really rigid or weird around him because he kind of, he has this sort of effortless charm and easygoingness and sort of, uh, He's very inviting with people, so I think that sort of really helps sort of set us at ease and, and uh, makes us feel comfortable and it deepens the camaraderie within us. For people that are basically under 40 or 45, I hope they uh, are introduced to a very important, um, pivotal uh, moment in American history. Uh, specifically American political history that, you know, nothing, I feel like there's before Gary Hart and after Gary Hart. You know, nothing in American politics has been the same since the election. The amount of scrutiny that a certain political candidate has now has to undergo, in some ways because of this scandal, um, is a real game changer. Um, so for, for a younger generation, I hope they're sort of introduced to this moment in American political history that was um, kind of lost and very, very um, important in how it shaped everything subsequently. And for people that are a little bit older, I hope they can kind of, you know, view this period as a moment where, you know, Pandora's box was opened in a sense, and they really kind of can revisit this period, not only as, you know, Donna Rice, monkey business, this sort of embarrassing, um, silly little chapter, but actually something that really cracked the ice and uh, really changed the landscape of American political theater forever, too. Um, you know, I feel like um, so many candidates, which may have great ideas, are now much more hesitant to run. Um, because they won't be mm, valued or judged based on their ideas alone anymore. Um, they'll, there's, the, all, their whole past will be combed through. And, um, and they're much more clenched now in front of the press. You know, I think the Gary Hart campaign was sort of the twilight of when candidates and the press could just unwind after a long day on the political trail and you know, throw back a few beers and everything is off the record and actually exchange ideas about politics and budgets and Russia and the Olympics or whatever. And really kind of grow and, and, and sort of um, have just more knowledge about various fields and opinions on different subjects. People were growing intellectually. And I think all that has come to an end as well, which is very unfortunate. So anyway, I hope people walk away kind of understanding that this is a really pivotal moment uh, where everything changed forever.